welcome to video number 22 for the series of videos on the Canon 500D T1i and Kiss X3. Sorry it's been a little while since I've done a video, uh, I've actually got rid of my older video camera, um, the Sony H50, I'm now back to using my really old camera, which is a Sony Mini DV camera. Um, in fact it's been that long since I've done a video, I've got a beer. Anyway, video number 22, what we're going to look at is flash. Um, we're going to start with the inbuilt flash, which is built into the 500D, and we're going to have a look at the menus and options that we've got with this. Um, we're going to find out that it is actually a very, very automatic flash, although we can have some control in camera, um, but we do have some options as well um, outside of the camera menus um, to control the light from this. And once we've got used to using this and what it's going to do to our images, uh, then we'll move on to a larger flash, a um, external speed light that Canon make, um, which is here, the 430EX2. Now, this is the only one that I have. Um, I don't have the range of Canon speed lights to look at, uh, so it will just be looking at this one. They do do others which are cheaper, some more expensive as well. Um, but I'll probably just mention those um, throughout the videos. So to start with, we'll have a look at the menus and features uh, of the inbuilt flash built into your 500D T1i and Kiss X3. Okay, so now we'll take a look at the um, menu options uh, whilst using the inbuilt flash. Um, it's not going to demonstrate how to use the flash at the moment, we're just going to have a look at the menu systems and what we can see in the different shooting modes um, on the 500D. Um, just bear with me because the lighting keeps on changing, I'm using window light at the moment so it may go a little bit duller or brighter. Okay, so the camera as you can see at the moment is in fully automatic mode and we have no real control over the flash here and there's no flash menu options at all. Um, within these menus or sub-menus, it's all automatic, which is pretty much the same for all the automatic modes. So I'm going to skip past those, and we're going to go straight to program mode. Okay, This is a semi-automatic mode where we have a little bit more control. And if we go into the menu, okay, we now have flash control menu. Um, red eye reduction will actually do a pre-flash um, to make people's pupils, um, people's pupils, wow, say that three times fast, Dialyte will become smaller, so red eyes less of a problem. Red eyes generally cause because the flash is on the same axis as the lens, mounted on top of the camera. Okay, so we go into flash control. We have option here, flash firing, which is enabled or disabled. You can tell it to it can work or it can't work. Built-in flash function settings. I'm going to ignore these bottom two because these are for external flash function settings where you mount a flash on top of the camera's hot shoe. If we go into the, the uh, built-in flash function settings, we can see the shutter sync speed, first curtain or second curtain. Now that means that the flash will fire either in the beginning of the exposure or at the end of the exposure. And what I'll do, rather than try and talk you through on the different effects of that, I'll set something up where I can shoot a couple of images which will show it fire better. Okay, and we have flash exposure compensation where we can make the flash output brighter or darker um, should we need to. It's not changing at the moment because the flash isn't actually up um, at the moment. And we also have ETTL2. ETTL is through the lens metering. Um, we have it set in evaluative or average where it takes an average of the scene to decide the flash calculation that's required or the flash output. Evaluative looks at the whole scene and takes it all into account. Um, so generally I just run my on, on evaluative anyway although I do admittedly very rarely use this inbuilt flash. These options here that you see are the same as what you'd see in shutter priority, aperture priority and manual as well. Now, one thing that I do always do when I'm using flash, be it the inbuilt one or otherwise, is I go to my white balance and shift it over to flash. That's the little lightning bolt thingy. Although don't ever call it that, it's flash white balance. So I'm going to set that, so at least then the white balance stays locked in and consistent and isn't going to change shot to shot, which it can do on auto white balance. Um, in particular if you've got situations where you're working against a coloured background in the studio, say a yellow paper background. Horrible backgrounds, don't like them. Um, but that can cause colour shifts if you're using auto white balance. So lock it in, um, so at least you're consistent at one white balance and if you do need to change it, you can change them all later on um, in post production, as long as you're shooting raw. So, there we go, flash white balance. Manual mode. Now, in manual mode, see, 
I mean, this is going to be the wrong exposure for in this room, there's not enough light. F4. I can crank the shutter speed up here to, say, one thousandth of a second. But as soon as I bring the flash up, it's dropped down to two hundredth of a second. The reason is that the flash, or the camera, has a sync speed. Usually referred to as X-Sync as well. So our maximum shutter speed where the shutter and the flash synchronize together to make the exposure. Um, if you go beyond it then you start to get a bit of a black bar across the bottom or one side of your image because it, the shutter and the flash are out of sync. You can go to a slower shutter speed um, you know, as long as you want to, up to seconds, 30 seconds, no problem at all. But on the 500D you have a sync speed of 1 200th of a second. So that is the maximum shutter speed that it will let you use. So you need to bear that in mind. If there's too much ambient light whilst you're doing that or using this, then you're going to need to start closing down your aperture. Again, we'll cover that in the further videos. So if we have a look, quick look back into the um, flash control menu, I have mine set as a quick menu here, so I can go back into it. As you can see, same as in program mode, we have all the same options. So very, very little control. It's all automatic. Now, should you want to make the flash output greater or less, then you can go to flash exposure compensation either within the menu like you saw or pressing the quick set button, highlighting the flash exposure compensation here and then either increasing or decreasing that to tell the flash you know, what you think is the correct exposure it isn't, so I need less or I need more. Uh, but again, we'll demonstrate things like this um, in practice. So that's just a quick introduction to the menus. Very, very simple. Like I said, it's all automatic. Um, I will cover some more advanced tips on how to use this um, in the next coming video. So hopefully this has been some help. It's been a quick look at the menu and the inbuilt flash on the Canon 500D, T1i and Kiss X3. Um, for the next video, I think what I'll do is I'll set up a portrait session where I will use this and show a couple of things that you can do to actually counteract um, or improve the look of the image as well. So thank you very much for watching, um, subscribe, comments, questions below, and I will see you guys soon.